Digital Physics 2 uh, and this video is about digital images. Okay, so how would you digitize, let's say you had a photograph that you took with a film camera, how would you digitize it? How would you change it into lots of ones and zeros? Well, what you do is you split the picture up into picture elements or pixels. A pixel is a picture element. So this uh, picture of Percy the Panda, and there you go, it's a 10 by 10 grid. And then what we do is looking at each picture element, uh, I'm making a, a choice here. Is it black or white? And if it's black, I'm going to call it zero. If it's white, I'm going to call it one. And we end up with my digital information, my binary information there. Okay. Now, as you can see, this particular digital image that I've created is rubbish. The image is barely recognizable, and there are two ways that we can make it better. So the two factors that affect the quality of a digital image are its resolution and bit depth. So let's talk about resolution. Resolution, remember this, the distance that each pixel represents. It's a very, very common A-level question, working out resolution. The image of a cricket ball is 170 by 170, so that's either vertically or horizontally. Its actual diameter is 71 millimeters, so the resolution of this image is going to be 71 millimeters divided by 170, which is 0.42 millimeters per pixel. Basically, the, the more pixels there are, then the, the resolution will be better. Well, it'll certainly be a, a smaller distance per pixel. In general, more pixels equals better resolution. Do we need lots and lots and lots of little pixels? Well, truthfully, the pixels only need to be small enough so that you can't see them. Like looking at this picture of an eye, uh, we need more pixels because I can see pixels. I can see little squares. It's looking pixelated to me. Now, bit depth. How many bits do we assign to each pixel? Well, so far uh, in my Percy the Panda, I had one bit per pixel. And if there's one bit, there are two possibilities. It's either a one or a zero. If I use two bits, then there are four possibilities. So I could have white and light gray, dark gray and black. If I had three bits per pixel, then there are eight possibilities. I can have a, a three bit binary code for different shades of gray. A very important equation, the number of possibilities equals 2 to the b, where b is the bit depth. Sometimes 2 to the n, but 2 to the b in this video, I'm calling the bit depth b, because it's my video. Uh, uncompressed images on the internet, uh, often you have 24 bits per pixel, and that's 8 for each primary color. So there's 8 bits for red, 8 bits for green, 8 bits for blue, and that gives you 256 levels of each primary color. And with that, you can make just about any color that you, you desire. This lovely shade of blue here is uh, red 111, green 203, blue 234. Inside a digital camera, there's a thing called a CCD, which is a charge couple device. And instead of film, an old fashioned camera light would fall on a film, the image would be on a film. Nowadays it falls onto a CCD and there are millions of tiny little light sensors and some of them detect red, some detect green, some detect blue. And then the levels of each color, this information is uh, encoded into 8-bit codes. Now, for each of these images, there are two images here, calculate the file size. In other words, how much memory it would make up. Metadata is just extra little bits of information that are tagged onto the picture. For example, its dimensions and what format of picture it is, and possibly the author and the date. Uh, but ignoring that, um, work out the file size of these pictures, and the answers are, in five, four, three, two, one. There you go. And I've given the answers in kilobytes. 
again, don't get your bits and your bites muddled up. <laughs>